Welcome back. It's still Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for staying with us. It is now time for the Hello, Mr. President segment of the show. It's a segment that's dedicated solely to you and problems you're facing within your community. So if there's anything at all happening in your environment that is not helping you grow as a Ghanaian, please take out your phone and record an up to one minute video. Send that video to us via the email hello mr president tv at gmail.com and the whatsapp line 0550585832 and every wednesday at 9 30 a.m we'll play those videos and call on to policymakers to do right by you let's take a look at the videos we received this week Hello, Mr. President. My name is Tananu Zakaria from Chorkweni in the one of Eastern region. Mr. President, the challenges in our community here are water crisis and poor road network. The effect of water crisis is that most of the students here go to school late, even our health personnel and teachers because of lack of water accessibility. Mr. President, poor road networks Armed robbers have used that as opportunity to create checkpoints on the road, stop buses and travelers, take away properties, at times, life. Mr. President, we ask you to come to our aid and address this issue sooner as possible. Thank you. So that's the situation in Trepani, and we all know that water and roads are crucial to our development. You need water to survive. Without clean water, there's no way you can even go for more than a few days. And for the residents of Trepani, access to clean water is a challenge. If there's one thing the COVID period taught us is that we need water to, to eat well, we need water to stay hygienic, we need water to really safeguard our help. And they're saying that for a very long time, they've been struggling with access to clean portable water. The next big issue they are dealing with is their road network. And the irony is that this is supposed to be the second year of roads. We know that with roads, young people will be able to get to school on time. Market women who rely on produce from the farm will be able to now get the resources they need to make a living. Farmers can't get an outlet to actually supply their, their, their produce on the farm if there's no access to market. And the roads play a crucial role in facilitating all of this. If your roads are bad, someone else outside of your area will be able to be more productive than you because they will be able to use the roads to get to their destination on time. That means that the time they'll waste on the roads, they'll invest in their education, they'll invest in their trade, they'll invest in their personal development and will be able to also contribute to the development of this nation. We have the former DC of the area who's also the current MP on the line with us. His name is Honorable Abdul Razak Tahidu. Good morning, Mr. Tahidu. How are you? Good morning, madam. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank you so much for being with us. Can you please tell us a bit okay. about what's going on with the water situation and road networks in Tripone? Thank you very much, Madam. And before I continue, I would want to say a very good morning to my cherished uh, conference that is Chirponi Conference as a whole. And then possibly before I then now speak on the water situation. Uh, regarding water situation, somewhere in February, Chirponi, especially the damp, known as popular, known as caterpillar, almost dried up. So a call was made on me. And quickly, I have to go down to the district by using my personal load that has been given for accommodation, using part of it to do the desilting of which that was done. And then I wrote a letter to the Minister of Agric to also possibly see the GIDA, that is the Ghana Education Development Authority, of which quickly they also responded because we have a field with. And last year, along the line, the street still we got broken. So they came to my aid. They have been able to fix the, the spillway for now. And I've been promised that Chirponi Dam will be included in their next 2022 budget for the other continuation of the system as well. Then 
that is to the caterpillar dam. Then chiropodin as a whole in terms of uh, water crisis, yes, actually it's true, I admit, that there's water crisis in chiropodin. But as former DC in office from 2017 to 2020, under my tenure, uh, was able to drill about 36 boreholes and repair some as well. As we speak, for now, um, some of the projects under special initiative which were abandoned, they came and did the drilling, but the heads were not fixed. So last four months ago, I bought uh, Bohu head for two of the two communities, that is Jilima and Kajitieri, which are fixed. I'm left with the Castle and Wonjoka as well to possibly fix that one. But on the whole crisis of water, for my four years then that have been in the for my four years then that have they have the, the people of Chirpuni have given me the mandate to lead them as a legislature. I've committed myself that I'm going to drill about hundred boreholes for the Chirpuni constituency through my digital assembly common fund. And in that regard I've written a letter to lifetime wealth water and yet to make them possible on Monday whether the agreement will be signed and we sign the memorandum of understanding. Possibly by October, we will launch a stakeholders uh, meeting where we kick start drilling of 100 boreholes for the whole Chirpuni constituency. From your estimation, how many boreholes will they need to really get back on their feet? Um, for now, we have about 182 communities okay. in the constituency. Right, already some are having, but I've made my mind that I'm going to add 100 more to the constituency. And how long has this problem been with the people of Tripone? Um, when I got to office in uh, 2017 May, though there were that water challenge, but as I did indicated, at my tenor, I was able to drill about 36 and repair some but the number that i repaired i can recollect for now but actually 36 were drilled and maintenance were made on others so it sounds like you've made a lot of progress with helping the people but what are the timelines we're looking at as far as ensuring that at least each community has some sort of access to clean portable water my timelines are in terms of access of portable where possible uh, what about drinking water? I'm going to use the common fund as this indicated mm -hmm. that 100 boreholes are going to be drilled. If even at all I won't drill any much, but for every year the common fund can be able to drill 25 per a year, and for the four-year period I think we'll be able to solve this water crisis issue in the Chirpani constituency. Thank you very much. Now talk to us about the roads as well. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam. For the road network, I think Chirpuni Yendi Road was awarded in 2016 under the former administration, but because they lost power early 2017, the contractors uh, abandoned site. Especially, we have two contractors on site. That is one is a Chinese and one is a Ghanaian. The Chinese man is responsible from the stretch from the to a community known as uh, Brikando. He started first in 2017 and then abandoned site. But as we I speak with you, the Chinese man is on site from the stretch of Wapuli to Brikando. And that of Break and do to Chirpuni to Yogu. Yes, that contractor took it to site. And he was at site and left site almost um, three months ago. But notwithstanding that, I made a move to the Minister of Road where he did indicate that fine. I agree with you perfectly, but go and put them on paper. Then to my office, I've done that. And on the paper, the project in terms of road, I need to indicate the statue of the project. And if I go to, if you take that paper for now, from Chirpony to Yendi to Chirpony, and I indicated the statue from 
were pulling to Bringando, they contracted it their site. But from Bringando to Yogo, the, uh, the statue is abandoned site. Then there's a stretch from Wonjoka linking Wanchiki, that one to abandon of site. Then the Cheropony Township was awarded to two contractors, of which I know that the other contractor also came and did some part of the work, but equally abandoned site. But the other side is the stretch from the Saoba Road to the township around the metro station, of which that one, the contractor, has not made a move. So I have indicated in the letter given to the Minister of Road that the contractor has not even visited site as we speak. We have another stretch from Cherponi Town linking Wanchiki, which is another net community where people go to market every now and then and make some proceeds for their own and also then maybe this assembly also get some revenue out of that. I've also indicated that yes, contractor has abandoned site. Then we have another stretch that links uh, the regional capital, that is on the Cherponi Senior High Secondary School Road towards Nalegu. Yes, towards Nalegu, I think the project has been awarded from Nalegu to uh, Napori. The contractors are signed. But for Napori to Cherponi, it's not yet awarded. That is what I know about the Cherponi road and the township. These are the linking roads in but Cherponi town. Mr. Tahidu, why are all these contractors abandoning site? What is exactly causing it? Um, well, uh, I, 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 that one, Madam, I, 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 it was one of them I called personally, and that is uh, the local contractor on the stretch from Ligando to uh, Yogu. He told me he needs to mobilize and come to site, and then he is waiting on his certificate for payment. So personally, I told him, fine, if that is the issue, I'm in Accra. Often I go home, but if you can make time, meet me in Accra as well. We make move to the minister vis-a-vis -vis as I've met him and discussed with him. Then he appreciate my concern as well. But personally, I called a contractor online and told him, but I have not seen him. And possibly by uh, next week or within the week, we are going on research. I can still hang around if it is me necessary to come. We move to the ministry and see what is going on there as well. What would it take for us as a nation to prioritize the trip on the roads? Because I sit here in Accra and I see roads that we don't need to fix being refixed, re retouched every now and then. What would it take for us to prioritize these roads? Because these are people who need it the most in our society. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, when we look at the road network for the prioritization, as you are talking, well, it's good to prioritize them, but when you take some of the stretch along the line, I prefer if only I'm giving the mandate, and if we can see that the contractors uh, they are not capable of uh, uh, handling the project or handling the job, possibly if it will be again wise or advisable, to terminate the contract. But I know the termination of contract also comes with its challenges. But I would have preferred that way. And that tells me about a, a committee. You know, I belong to the Committee of Trade, Industry, and Tourism. Yesterday, we had the opportunity to meet uh, this team. That is the Ghana, um, Ghana, Chamber of, uh, Ghana National Chamber of Commerce uh, in an industry association. And they brought up an idea, which I deem it, I, I buy into the idea. They are saying if we can, in a way, have a, a bill that will let them prioritize, do some prioritization of the, the road by going private. And I think it's laudable. Because if you go private and coordinate with the government, I think we'll be able to achieve some of these our road network challenges. But now let me speak on uh, to say that. All the five northern regions that we have in the northern regions, uh, we don't have much uh, mineral resources. When you come down south, we are, we have an access to a, a, a fund like Boko Road Fund. But for the northern region, I think we are here to identify any better, good, uh, rich uh, mineral resources that if they deem it possible or properly, name it 
and yeah, another source of funding for the roots in the five northern regions. But, but Mr. Tahidu, you fine. would agree with me that the distribution of wealth shouldn't be based on what natural resources we could get from uh, the different regions in the country? Yeah, I agree perfectly. So, wrap, wrapping up for us, what are some of the things that you would do differently from your predecessors? Because your people are watching us this morning, they are listening to you. For them, is the problems. They see this road contributing to their inability to rise out of poverty and really make a good living for themselves. So, what do you want to tell them about finally helping them solve the water crisis, which you've done a lot of work in, but also the road issues? Um. Finally, finally, I think uh, I, I, one, I want that I want to let my people know that yes, let's embrace peace. With peace, we can achieve mass development. I left an issue out when I was talking about the roads. Ideally, the contractors most came to site. Some of them came to site in 2018, but unfortunately, 2018 up to 2019, 2018 June up to 2019, somewhere June July, we the Consensi or Chirpuni was involved in a conflict on land disputes. So that actually retarded most of our development in the Consensi. So in going forward, as we have embraced peace now, we should continue to embrace peace so that we can have much development. Thank but you. Looking at the other areas of sectors as well, in terms of health, education, then agri, we need to do much as well. Yes, I've done some as a DC in terms of health education, I agree. But I need to do much again in those three categories as well as the road network. So I continue to urge the youth and the whole consensus to let us have peace. With peace, we can achieve more. Thank you very much, Honorable Abdul Razak Tahidu, for being with us. He's the current MP and former DC of Tripone, and he's done a lot as far as solving the water issues there. But of course, there's a lot more to be done. Uh, hundreds of communities don't have access to clean, potable water, and his agenda is to at least address some of that before he leaves office. And of course, there are challenges with contractors, you know, not finishing and just abandoning the road projects they embark on. Again, this is Hello, Mr. President segment of the show. If you have any issues in your community and you want the nation to hear about it and policymakers to do something about it, just take out your phone and record an up to one minute video. Send that video to us by the email, hello, Mr. President TV at gmail.com and the WhatsApp line 0550 585832.